Welcome, folks, to another exciting episode of The Squeaky Wheel. With me, as always, is my very good friend, as we pointed out many times, behind the music of Alex Kusterok is the President, Lawrence Gervais. And folks, I'm Ross Memphis Pambrin, the Captain. And here we are to bring another exciting week. And a big shout out first, Lawrence, right off the bat, as I've sort of made a bit of a habit. It's National Alcohol Awareness Month. It's also National Library Week. So all of our librarians out there, I guess I shouldn't be doing a shout out to all of our alcoholics out there, but folks, if this is a, an issue within you, for you or your family, this is the month to really think about it. Um, another one is, is Vimy Ridge um, sort of Memorial Day that they're celebrating on April 9th. So for all of our listeners, keep those in mind. And Lawrence, I should slap you just like Will Smith just to get this show started. Well, now, now is when you say Tansy instead of <laughs> at the end of the episode. This is when you're going to throw yeah. me under the bus, is right? Because of last episode. <laughs> yes, folks. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, I said Tansy at the end of our last, and I was thinking it was like aloha. Well, it was sort the, of a hello and goodbye. Uh, yeah, it's the opposite. So you don't, you say at the beginning and you say hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I noticed that I'm sitting lower. I'm not sure what that means. And, and maybe this is a problem with... Uh, well, Devin behind the scenes right now, I think, yeah. is trying to make sure that uh, it looks <laughs> as though I'm towering over you. Though the cameras do a wonderful job of being able to change up the perception. Yeah, just make me taller. <laughs> awesome. If we had a green screen and it wasn't Louis Riel behind you, it would be much easier. In which case, we could actually probably make you look like a dragon. Yeah, well, maybe I'm, yeah, maybe I was blocking Louis Riel. That's why they put me down. So. Yeah, so folks, this for all of you who are watching uh, today or, and not just listening, but, um, or if you are just listening, there's not a green screen behind us. This is Lawrence in the live. Um, our Louis Riel, the, the infinity flag, the squeaky wheel, some beautiful Voyager pictures. And, and as always, we're coming to you at this time from Southern Alberta in the beautiful area of Calgary. This episode brought to you by the Métis Nation of Alberta with a vision of a strong Métis nation embracing Métis rights, and a mission to pursue the advancement of the socioeconomic and cultural well-being of the Métis people of Alberta. For more information, go to www.albertamétis.com. Now, back to the show. Uh, Lawrence, let's jump into, so what did you think about the slap heard around the world? Because this week, it sounds like Will Smith has stepped down from yeah. the academy. I think he's trying to save himself because I think the academy is going to start doing stuff. I, that's and, a very good point. So and be I ahead hear of that it. that producer um, who was in charge there at that time, who let Will Smith stay, oh. had said that he spoke to Chris Rock and said, Chris Rock, are you going to press charges or whatever? And you have a problem. And Chris <clears> Rock said, I don't think so. But apparently he didn't even speak to Chris Rock. He just said, carry on. Oh, Will. so there's a bit more of a Absolutely. story as that may or may not have occurred. Yeah, but I heard the academy um, who were conferred with the police at that that instant, because we know LAPD was around. They do the security probably. Yes. Right? And they probably went, you guys have to pull them out of the theater. The guy that I um, took me out on the rush tour, he ended up, he used to do the Oscar security. So it's not that the LAPD aren't there, but there's also all this private work exactly. that's done for that high level. So. Yeah. I'm sure these guys are trained in that stuff. They know when they see a common assault and they witnessed it. You have to think that if you're Absolutely. one of the LAPD officers <clears throat> nearby, it's like, this would be pretty cool to do something. <laughs> like, somebody. But I mean, go to a commercial. To you know, yeah. cut to a curtain. Pull them out to the side and say, you can't come back in here, right? Yeah. They didn't do anything. And how do you do that to Will Smith, the, the guy who's... With the exception of Wild Wild West, which was just, oh, it was a horrible show. Folks, do everything in your power to try and not watch that movie. Actually, so it watch did it. have Kevin Klein. <laughs> <laughs> it did have Kevin Klein, and I actually thought it was kind of cute for that, but it was a terrible. And I think he, all of the budget essentially went to his salary. Right. Yeah. But, you know, it's, yeah, I think there's some mental health things that are happening with Will, and not sure what it is. He has to go through that to find it out, but yeah. his reaction shouldn't have been that. It's hard to believe that in a in a room full of that Hollywood of people of that that this is his reaction, and that makes me do, do think that there must be a uh, you know a challenge that he's facing at this time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit, Lawrence, about the delegation because as much as the Will Smith thing captured the world um, in Canada here, right? We sent. The Canada sent three delegations. The Métis met first. I think it was the Inuit second, and the First Nations group mm -hmm. afterwards. And I do have um, uh, something I was reading this morning about what was provided to the Pope 
And I don't know if you'd read about that, but no. we'll talk a little bit about it and I'll sort of, um, we can bounce around some of the ideas. But, you know, our our family of our Métis families coming home, I think maybe tomorrow, they're on their way. They were there for just a short spell. But that video of Alex playing for the Pope, yeah, folks, this is the guy that brings in the squeaky wheel. This is the guy who brings in our show that we're at, I don't know, close to 80 episodes. And... I, other than when I met B.B. King, and he'd played for, I think at the time, two, but I think in the end, three different popes. This is the only other person I know who's met the pope or has ever had a chance to play for him. So this is, I'm pretty excited to hear his story. Right, and, you know, for Alex, and he's he's not personal about this, it's very public, but he was on a es intervention yeah. for mm-hmm. alcoholism for being young, fiddle player, Um and I think he's in his third year of sobriety, just had a child. And he even has a Facebook post that he just put on yesterday, this big, long journey that he's done in life and how you're given these opportunities uh, because you're following a good path. Yeah. Right? And he said, I probably wouldn't have had that if I would be continuing on the way he was three years ago. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, when he was on our show, and, you know, we left that as a door open to him to, to open that conversation. Mm-hmm. And I think um, for us and for the listeners and for our youth out there, they get the awareness that life is, is can be a challenge. And sometimes, um, you know, these situations that we put ourselves in, it's hard to get out of. Mm-hmm. And, and for Alex, you think of it, it had to get to the level of intervention uh, that the TV shows wanted to record it. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the, he, that's a journey. And he's done the right steps. And when I see him now, he's got such positive energy. And again, this guy now has played for the Pope. And he probably will a second time because we know the Pope is journeying to Canada. Yeah. Hopefully he goes to Lac St. Anne. And certainly, um, you know, the offer to Alex will probably be there too to play for him. So. So folks, if you're listening out there, when the Pope is coming, and if you have an opportunity to reach out to him, could you tell him Memphis and the Grand band wants to play for the pope is that self-serving mm. yeah that yeah I th- is that the definition of it i don't think it would happen <laughs> i'm just saying what if the pope said he was coming here and you know he's looking for some really good original country rock music no oh, he's not looking to <laughs> sit in front of a bunch of yahoos <laughs> sorry so you have seen us thing hasn't <laughs> You're right. Though I often reach out to our listeners to try and create the craziest. Elon Musk has never called back to ask about making an elect- electric uh, Métis or Red River cart. Yeah. Though, I'm sure he's watched the, those episodes when we talk about that. So some of the things actually that I, I found interesting was the, the the First Nations, I think it was their group that was providing red moccasins. And as they share this connection of of recognition with the Pope, they're saying... Here are, here is items that are personal to us and to our culture, and we want to share them. One was a white leather stole um, beaded with orange crosses, mm. and it was beautiful. And, of course, the orange cross is representing the, the um, orange, shirt. orange shirt day. And, and so that's an honoring, but also a bit of a commemoration. Uh, one of the groups gave snowshoes. The, uh, the Métis gave a, a memory book. The... I think there was something else that we provided. Didn't we do the moccasins? The maybe, maybe ours was the moccasins. Yeah. The Inuit did a sealskin pouch, and it yeah. has a cross on it, which looked absolutely beautiful. But you know what um, I was unaware of? You know what the church gave back to each one of these members? Uh, didn't they give them an olive branch or yeah, something? It yeah, it was a bronze olive branch that's yeah. mounted. And how seemingly cognizant is it that they're providing something that says we need to continue to rebuild. Yeah. That we need this. Let's reach back out to each other and build on this. And I'm excited. Uh, even my own father, when he watched the some of the prayers and the and the speeches, uh, he was, you know, for as hard as he's found the conversation about um, church and religion and Catholicism, there was um, an awareness. I think by definitely by one of the First Nations groups that it's time to heal. We can't continue to be angry and look for the strengths that the church have been providing our culture our the, you know, and find ways to reestablish that. And the fact that there was a, an apology and an acceptance, I think a lot of us didn't really see that there was going to be any kind of apology, but it seems like the words are being spoken. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, 
um, I would probably say this is the first step. Mm -hmm. Even though people have been saying the step's been happening before, but certainly on our our part, TRC, all these recommendations to the government, but the churches are now starting to follow follow through. Um, but the other churches are certainly way ahead of the Catholic Church. Right, I see what you're saying. And the yeah. Catholic Church, their reconciliation efforts happen now. And TRC, folks, the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. Um, commission. Or commission, sorry. Yes. I, I think, you know, too often our government puts together a committee or a commission and or such, and yeah. good, we'll just get over this hump and then let it go away. I think this is important, that this is around for a long time. Yeah. Just like we need to come up with ways to commemorate all these lost families and their children. Yeah, because, you know, when the TRC um, wasn't a government committee or commission, mm -hmm. it was actually based from the residential school survivors. They're the ones that uh, funded it and set it up, right? Um, and then the TRC uh, hearings went all over Canada, and they got people to the mic, and they documented everything, and they made those recommendations to the government of Canada. This is how you have to do this. There's 94 calls to action. Mm-hmm. But you see, Canada has only did maybe a handful of those steps. Yeah. They haven't got done all 94. Sure. Um, industry companies are starting to do it. Uh, schools are starting to adhere to them. But they're 94 steps. It's not three or four, right? It's a whole blanket. But, you know, the efforts are there, and that's the first step. The Catholic, uh, certainly, diocese have to understand that those records have to be open. We have to establish that relationship so we can get the families to start talking about uh, their ancestor that they lost or mm -hmm. their, their people that they lost, right? And, how, and that's the only way to re, really reclaim that, uh, that relationship. So, Well, and you know, we've said it a million times that if we're not involved and brought into the conversation, the conversation isn't happening. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is... This is the first step. You're right. Until there's the until there's the actions that are happening, whether it's at a federal level, provincial level, and or in this case, the Catholic Church level. Yeah. Yeah. And what's really interesting about this whole thing is that it was indigenous led. Mm -hmm. That's where those truths came from. Mm -hmm. Because if the government might have uncovered these truths, they might have did something to stop those truths. Right. Sort of. Out. But Sweep it under the rug. That's right. But, you know, certainly the Indigenous leaders out there who, who did a lot for these TRCs should be commended because it created that change, mm -hmm. right? And it was an Indigenous-focused um, thing, too, and that has to be honoured. So it's not swept under the buffalo rug. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Some would say the rug, but yes, for I think historically <laughs> we would say it hasn't been swept out underneath the buffalo rug. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the things that are happening down locally here or actually throughout the province, um, in the world of the Métis community, the MA Voyageurs right now, they're one of the youth teams. They're playing the 2022 Native Hockey Provincials. So there's the... There's the three teams, yeah. Yeah, three teams, the boys and the girls, uh, at different underage, under 17s, and I think under 13. Yeah, under 18, under 15, and I think under 13. But this is the first time we had an all-girls um, M&A team, and I watched a bit online, and great. It was fantastic. They all look great. They well, like Montreal Canadians, but to me, yeah. like, they're all kind of the same Whereas, colors. I don't know if that's a nice call. They look like Montreal Canadians. Let's say they look like Edmonton Oilers or Calgary Flames because those teams are winning. Well, yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> this girls team might have a you know chance to actually beat the actual Canadians. Yeah, they might actually, okay, that's a good point. If they went out to play the Montreal Canadiens right now, yeah, they might. The um, I I think it's so fabulous that, that, that we're seeing these games back in person, mm -hmm. that that energy. Um, big shout out to all of those players out there who are, who are carrying the flag in these, in these native games. Yeah. And I caught, you know, I caught a little bit of the, the girls playing, you know, Saddle Lake. And then I think uh, another, there was another post of them playing. <coughs> yeah. It was just kind of neat to see us a Métis nation um, in an all native provincial hockey tournament. Folks, if you think that the squeaky wheel hockey team should play the under 13 girls team, then that would be a fair competition because I've seen Lawrence on the ice and Lord knows I'm always stiff and sore. Oh, I'm I don't not. know who else we would get. I guess we'd have to ask Leighton and Devin to try and get in, in the game with us because we're going to have to bring in a few more players. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and which one of us is going to play net? I'm not really too sure about that. The uh, Lots of connection points happening through the province. 
especially when it comes to starting the recognition of, or sorry, the citizenship. Folks, if you have friends or family who have not gone through the process, in April, there's a lot of areas throughout the province that you can connect. Go to albertamatee.com and you'll see the dates that are available throughout the province where you can go and start your, your, your registration. Um, wellness programs, Lawrence, there's so many, and I know we talk about them, but I think it's important that we just continue to bring out that awareness that there's not only is there mental health supports, spiritual health, health reports, there's physical health. I mean, they can support you if you need any sort of the allied services like physiotherapy. All you have to do is continue to engage with the Métis community. Yeah. Quit core is like smoking. So yeah, Kyla, who, who behind the scenes here at the region, at our region. And I think it's a, it's a, program that's available anywhere in this province she does a fabulous job of creating uh, and putting together all of the pieces that are necessary to do the work of quitting smoking folks it's time i quit smoking because i got sick and they raised the cigarette prices back in 2000 1999 and i said forget that i'm not smoking anymore and i never really did it because i didn't know how to hold it it was sort of either like this or like this and so there was a couple times where I'd actually, just because John Lennon did it, I'd have one lit and I'd put it at the end of my guitar, just right. up where the strings were. But I, I didn't know what to do with it. And you know what? The thing always just stunk. Yeah, that's you. I mean, <laughs> that's part of it. That's the part that, you know, you know, you go into, you know, I was down south recently. You go into a place where people smoke, it's mm-hmm. there. And thank goodness, you know, here, you can walk into a bar and a restaurant. It doesn't stink. You have one person outside smoking. Now, of course, I'm getting angry emails from all the smokers out there, but the one person, you know, within a block, and you can almost smell that person. Well, I think you're just hypersensitive. To it. That's true because of, uh, that's a shot of my nose, I yeah. think is what it is. But, you know, you just walk uh, the other side downwind, like you're probably downwind <laughs> to the smoke. So, so we should, okay, in the morning, do you mind them. sending me a, an update of which way the wind direction is going? <laughs> so I know how to walk around town. <laughs> yeah. That'll make it a little more complicated. Uh, dental programs for kids, folks. Um, make sure you look into those. And as well, there's uh, great programs out there for education. There's driver training. Mm-hmm. There's security guard programs. And even I was reading recently, um, this came across my plate. Somebody had reached out and, and there was a, an unfamiliarity on my part. This person had not done their taxes right. since 2006. Mm. I... I and there was sort of a negligence. It's like, well, we're ignorance. I, I didn't know, you know, unless, unless you're sort of making some money or I, I didn't know you had to file taxes. 15, 16 years that you haven't filed taxes. Now, there is tax help there. If you're in the Métis community, you can reach out again. Uh, reach out to us or go to albertamétis.com. And, you know, we funnel a lot of our programs there because they end up being provincial. But in the end, this person finally filed their taxes. Yeah. And you know Did what? Did they get any return? Probably. No, but you don't really get, the government can't be harsh, hard on you. No. For ignorance. No, they never When are. you go, well, I didn't know I had to. What are they going to say? Other than, well, you do. And here's how you're going to be. You're not going to get hauled off. You're not going to get shipped out of the country. Unless you're a business owner and you haven't been doing it for 50 or 60 <laughs> okay. years. Okay. Then that's a problem. Yeah. Oh, and I get enough letters every year saying, hey, you yeah. need to do this. You need to do this. Yeah. I haven't forgotten what that. What if it's I have your personal taxes. taxes? Yeah, I'm in government. They're, yeah. They're after the big fish. Yeah. They are after the big fish, which yeah. means they're probably after me as well. <laughs> uh, Rupert's Land, great programs available as well. Um, there's support when it comes to micro businesses for women. Mm-hmm. Um, those that's a, that's a real popular one that's just really starting to emerge right now. There's opportunities when it comes to job searches, education for safety tickets. So, folks, if you're going into any kind of work or um, any physical work or any, reach out to these groups first and find out what training is available. That takes the responsibility off your plate. There's a lot of employers out there that want to work and bring Indigenous people into their fold and opportunities, there's funding opportunities. So the more education you can have, the better opportunity. Yeah, well, Apita Gwisan, which is our, our business arm, our business arm. those micro loans <clears throat> that are available for, since COVID have happened, um, they really want to make sure that People who need the general public to sell things um, are, are taken care of, right? So and not just loans. They're also grants. Sometimes it depends yeah. on your relationship and what business you're developing that they can find funding right. for you. Yeah. So, yeah, make sure you look into them. Uh, again, one big um, area we need to just really be polite and focus on is the our thoughts for all of those people in Ukraine. The families, the 
all of the individuals who are being displaced, the challenges for everybody else in the community. Uh, I was recently at an event um, as a fundraiser for the Ukraine mm -hmm. and was invited out. Beautiful evening. And they had five Bandura players. And maybe we'll get um, Devin to throw a picture up. They're playing this historic instrument. And it, it's similar to like a... Uh, What's the big one? A guitar? Well, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, okay. It's similar to a guitar. No, <laughs> I play a guitar, so I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not struggling true. with that one. What's the one? Oh, the harp. So, and it's so many strings, and they're crossed, and you can change the pitches as you're playing. So there was five ladies who were playing, a beautiful, beautifully dressed out, and then two singers as well, and they would all take certain turns singing. And it was a. These were these Ukrainian stories of family and connection. Very, very so much fun to be involved with and i mean there's right living just as much fear of what's happening to family back home and their country and their culture you know as they're trying to fundraise here yeah i mean the only ukrainian stuff that i'm you know aware of is uh participating in a lot of their their dancing oh right and um being a classical ballet artist you kind of learn a bit of their technique and you kind of bring it into that sort of realm and you know i'd taken classes with shumka and cherimash up north and and when i went to russia yeah i met a lot of ukrainian dancers there and there's a lot of ukrainian ballet dancers that are in the war right now which is very odd to us yeah. to see right but you know we see a picture of them on stage and all of a sudden we see them in fatigues <laughs> carrying yeah. a gun right so mm -hmm. yeah it's a pretty wild thing that's happening there and you know everybody has stepped up there now i guess as a question to you can you do that thing where you cross your hands and you kick your feet out where you're really low? Do you mind? Are we able to pull the cameras back right now so that we can capture Lawrence trying that? No, but <laughs> I've seen guys do that, and I go, holy man, and, and try to do that. But, you know, when they do the manege, which is they do a carousel, I go around in circles, and they all clap, and that's when they do the, the sort of the soldiers back then used to do these dances. Right. And they do different steps in a manege, so in a circle, then they would finish, and then the next person would go. And it would be a series of steps, right, that they would do. And a lot of it was acrobatic. Oh, it must be. But, you know, we learned it in class, in classical ballet world. Um, and we, I never knew that I was learning that until I was, when I started dancing with them. And said, hey, I, I can probably do that and would try to do it. And, but some of those guys are really impressive. Oh, yeah, and like you said, acrobatic. I mean, you, the flexibility that they must have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the I revolutions tried to squat, in the I air, over. they would just go from spot to spot to spot. The barrel turns, you know. Yeah, they would do all these pretty amazing things. Folks, if we can get 50 emails, I'm pretty sure, and or 50 subscribers, we can get Lawrence to try that. If we can get him to try it and film it, it'll be on YouTube as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Devin, send the, send the lights around because it is time for Indigenous Plant Conversation. Lawrence, today's conversation is being brought to you from Medicines to Help Us, the traditional Métis plant use. The author, Christy Belcourt, and it uh, involves the Michif translation of and essays regarding Michif plants. So, folks, here's the book. Try and get a picture up there for you. Um, and the plant that I wanted to talk about is one that I know we've, we've chatted a little bit about this year when I ended up getting stung on my guitar hand was the plantain yeah. and um, the, it, it, you know, you look at it and it almost seems like it's a bit of a weed, but this is one that sort of grows in those dry patchy areas and you can especially find it. Um, very thick green broadleaf would be the term for it. So if it was in a farmer's field, it sort of becomes a bit of a, a nuisance weed, but they have these little tendrils that come up, mm -hmm. but you'll bite the, you'll, you'll tear off. Now, <laughs> pretty sure it's not dog urine that makes the healing i have to think there's something in the plant but i tend to wash it and then yeah you'll chew it and then so that it gets in your mouth and then as it's all uh, bunched up then you'll put it on the injury right yeah uh with historical records it's sort of chokeweed oh actually i never realized that because of course the broad leaf is essentially stealing all the moisture and choking everything else off around me but uh it records the use of heated plantain leaves on swellings and inflammations and uh, externally the inflammation bites for the treatment of rheumatism. So, I, you know, I think it's fun, Lawrence, that we're, we're bringing that bit of connection of 
our culture, the First Nations culture, the Indigenous awareness. Folks, when we damage the ecology of an area, we risk losing these plants. And a lot of these plants are Indigenous. (laughs) If you can't, if you're just listening, you can't see me doing the air quotes. But folks, I have both of them up now. It's Indigenous plants to the area. So we need to continue to recognize and learn more. Yeah, well, I think, you know, predominantly in our society, it's very matriarchal that the women took that knowledge of medicine Mm -hmm. and they took care of the families. Because back then there were no pharmacies that you could just run to and and catch anything, right? You'd you'd have to go into the landscape. Um, So it was very valuable um, thing, knowledge to have. And there's a lot of knowledge keepers that still keep this. But there's also a ceremony to when you pick a plant too. You know, there's saying a prayer. There's you know, a lot of those things before you even grab it. And then you have to replenish the earth, you know, after that too. Even after you use the medicine, there's a certain way that you honor the ecological system uh, spiritually too, right? So there's Wait, a lot of that. I'm really glad you brought that up. That's so important. I guess that's something that, you know, almost we would see in TV and movies and such, but we forget that even now, our responsibility to Mother Earth and to the environment is to... Um, to say thank you and That's how right. do we do that right and I've, I've recently had somebody asking me about smudge ceremonies and, and the ability to you know use this to cleanse ourselves mm-hmm. but also to you know thank thank our earth for providing this opportunity that's right um so yeah i mean and you know books like this are very very important you know i have that book at home which is you know just pictures yeah because it was done you know a long time ago and this one is a more of a newer one but you know, we can't lose the emphasis that this information of medicine really shouldn't be in a pharmaceutical company because they use it for something else. Right. There's no ceremony about it. It's just creating vast wealth, right? So So I guess what I'm hearing from Lawrence is, is and this isn't, it's just, if you take this job op- or business opportunities, pretty soon we're going to be selling squeaky wheel plantain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It'll be first, if it works for you, it's, you know, you get to try it for free first, if you have a bee sting or something. And then if you want more of it, it'll be a thousand dollars for every plantain bite that we chew up and send your way. So Lawrence, I think that's this way we keep it out of the hands of the pharmacy groups. And then we yeah, try to capitalize. Well, I know medicine people that, you know, <laughs> refuse to take them out in, onto the land to show them things, right? Because it, interesting, they know. Yeah. They know, yeah, yeah, that that eventually will be taken. Um, we only have a couple minutes left, Lawrence, of our time together. What do you think about, so it's March Madness, and I last week I made the comment that there was that sign that says, just because it's March doesn't mean you can drive like you're mad kind of thing. But Eric Church yeah. canceled his concert. To watch a basketball game? To watch his North Carolina Tar Heels, who have never made it this far. Yeah. And I don't know if you watched the game last night. Did you see what happened? No, I didn't. They won. So they are going to the national championship. Were they playing Duke? They played Duke last night. Wait, or did Duke win? No, Duke, they played their last game with that coach. Oh, yeah, so they lost. Yeah, Yeah. they lost. Yeah, so the Tar Heels beat Duke, and it was one of the other two teams who won (laughs) yesterday (laughs) is who the Tar Heels are playing. If you work for Sportnet, please don't watch this. (laughs) Don't don't use this as as your uh, template on how to do (laughs) sports reporting. (laughs) But I think it was the number one team, which they beat Villanova. That's who it was. Um, Yeah. One, yeah. of the, one of the teams beat Villanova, knocked them out, but they were the number one. So now it's going to be the number one versus number eight. So, Devin, can you put on the screen whether he's right or wrong? <laughs> or, <you> know, so. <laughs> Throw something up for us. And uh, another, and sort of last to finish our conversation, and going back to the idea of Mother Earth, is the Kinsey Mountain Caribou Herd. Now, I think, I, I forgot to read exactly where they're from, but they were within a First Nation community. But there's a collaboration between the research groups And this First Nation, that this herd was down to 38 caribou in 2013. And since then, they've managed to repopulate, you know, through the animal husbandry to get them up to 114. So it's a bit of a success story that we're starting to see. My company, the the Memphis Group right now, is doing some work in a co-creation relationship with the university, or sorry, with the Calgary Zoo. And it's kind of fun because here, this is what's happening local. And there's there's fairly good funding. We're working at trying to understand the foliage of the mountaintops in Kenya because they're trying to figure out their herd 
of bongo, mountain bongo, which looks like a deer and a bit of a, these long top horns. I have to put a picture up too. Um, there's, they can really only find like 20 of them in this whole reserve. So now they're trying to figure out, can they reintroduce them to that ecology? Will the community be there to support it? And how do they protect them? So this was really fun for me to read. I'd have to look into this a little was bit Was there more. just a lot of more predators in that area? Or is that... Or just I think in a harvesting. lot of cases it's harvesting, yeah. Oh, okay. and, and not being aware of how to harvest properly. So I think they're making some strides. The, um, you know... It's cited. These are partnerships that are happening all around the world with different agencies. And this, this is a nice one to read. So Lawrence, we hit on a lot of really fun topics today and some challenging ones. You know, we're going to, that hopefully residential school awareness goes on for a long time so that we can really concentrate on helping people heal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we're on a path forward and we'll see what happens in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. So folks, from all of us here at the squeaky wheel, from Leighton and Devon behind the scenes, from President Lawrence and from the captain, Ross Pammer, make sure you keep the wheel squeaking, folks. Make sure you hug all of your friends who have any relationship to the Ukrainians and their families and, and, you know, be very considerate of the fact that this is very challenging for everybody around the world. And thank you always for joining us. Make sure you click subscribe. And if you don't like the show, tell 50 people, folks. That can't be bad for us. <laughs> thank you kindly. The Squeaky Wheel is brought to you by the Squeaky Wheel Company, co-hosted by the President, Lawrence Gervais, Memonet Region 3, and the Captain, Ross Memphis Pamper. Our program is broadcast from Calgary in Region 3 of the Métis Nation of Alberta, which is part of the historic Métis Nation homeland. We also acknowledge these lands are the traditional territories of Treaty 7, Black the Confederacy, Sitka, Kainai, Gandhi, Lutsina, and Stony Nakoda, with whom we share this land on the basis of our historical and ongoing relationships. You can always reach us for comment about our programming by email at tsw at thesqueakywheel.ca or find us on our website, www.squeakywheel.ca and our socials. For our comments, it is our focus to recognize all of our First Nations and Indigenous friends, share a connection with Métis settlements, and listen to and show respect to our Métis brothers and sisters and families. Here at the Squeaky Wheel, we give thanks to our elders for their guidance and to Mother Earth for her time she allows us to be here and share her bounty. From all of us at the Squeaky Wheel, Tanzee.